There is complete facility for the small complete units, namely the living entities, to realize the complete. And all sorts of incompleteness is experienced on account of incomplete knowledge of the complete. So the Bhagavad Gita is the complete knowledge of the uh, Vedic wisdom. Uh, the whole Vedic knowledge is infallible. The there are different examples how we take Vedic knowledge as infallible. And take for example, so far the Hindus are concerned and how they accept the Vedic knowledge as complete. And here is an insignificant example. Just like uh, the cow dung, the cow dung is the stool of an animal. Uh, according to Smriti or Vedic wisdom, if one touches the stool of an animal, he has to take his bath to purify himself. But in the Vedic scriptures, the cow dung is uh, stated as pure. Rather, impure uh, place or impure things are purified by touch of the cow dung. Now, if one argues how it is that in one place it is said that the stool of the uh, animal is impure, in another place it is said that the cow dung, which is also the stool of an animal, it is pure. So it is contradictory. But actually it may appear to be contradictory, but because it is Vedic injunction, uh, therefore uh, for our practical purposes we accept it. And, and by that acceptance we are not committing mistake. It has been found by modern uh, chemists, modern science. One doctor, uh, Lal uh, Mohan Ghosa, he has uh, very minutely analyzed the cow dung and he has found the cow dung is uh, a composition of all antiseptic properties. So similarly he has also analyzed the water of the Ganges out of curiosity. So and my idea is that Vedic knowledge is complete because it is above all and doubts and all mistakes. And Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all Vedic knowledge. The Vedic knowledge is therefore infallible. It comes down through the perfect disciplic succession. Therefore, it, Vedic knowledge is, is not a thing of research. Our research work is imperfect because you are searching everything with imperfect senses. Therefore, the result of our research work is also imperfect. It cannot be perfect. Uh, we have to accept the perfect knowledge. The perfect knowledge is coming down, as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Just we have begun. Evang parampra prartham imang We have to uh, receive the knowledge uh, from the right source, 
in a disciplic succession of spiritual masters beginning from the Lord Himself. The so Bhagavad Gita is spoken by the Lord Himself and uh, Arjuna, the uh, I mean to say the student who took lessons of the Bhagavad Gita, he accepted the whole story as it is uh, without any uh, cutting. Uh, that, was, that is also not a law that we accept a certain portion of Bhagavad Gita and reject another portion. That is also not accepted. We must accept the Bhagavad Gita without interpretation, without any cutting, and without our own whimsical uh, participation in the matter, uh, because it should be taken as the most perfect uh, Vedic knowledge. The Vedic knowledge is received from the transcendental sources because the first word was spoken by the Lord Himself. The word spoken by the Lord is called apourasya, or not delivered by any person of the mundane world, who is infected with four principles of imperfectness. A living being of the mundane world has four defective principles of his life, and they are one, that he must commit mistake. Two, he must be sometimes illusion. And three, he must try to cheat others. And four, he is endowed with imperfect senses. With all these four principles of imperfectness, one cannot deliver the perfect form of information in the matter of all-pervading knowledge. The Vedas are not like that. The Vedic knowledge was imparted in the heart of Brahma, the first created living being, and Brahma in his turn disseminated the knowledge to his sons and disciples as they are originally received from the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 